Back in 2018, we got an announcement that E.K. Johnston would be working on a new trilogy of Padme novels. And I went into this trilogy very excited, really hoping that this was going to hit home. Because at the time, we didn't have a whole lot of Padme material. And we still don't, even with this trilogy. We don't have a lot of Padme material. Sure, she's a badass in Clone Wars. Uh, you know, we've got some mentions of her in some other novels. Brotherhood, she was in a little bit. Uh, even in Thrawn, uh, what was it? Thrawn uh, uh, Alliances, where we got some flashbacks to Anakin during the Clone Wars, and we got some Padme stuff there as well with Thrawn. Uh, but we haven't really got a lot of other Padme stuff, you know? And so I was really looking forward to this trilogy quite a bit, and I figured tonight I would sit down and kind of give you guys my thoughts on this a little bit. Now that it's officially wrapped up, now that we now have the third book in the, in the trilogy, I thought I'd give you kind of my thoughts and feelings on this book, on, the, on this trilogy of books. Uh, so let's start off with the first book in the trilogy. I'm going to talk about all three of them. Let's start off with the first book, uh, Queen's Shadow. Like I said, it is by E.K. Johnston. It was released on March 5th in 2019. Uh, this is a book I was really looking forward to. I was really excited to read. Uh, this one takes place towards the end of Queen Amidala's uh, term as queen, I guess you could say. She has gone through everything that we saw in episode one. She's done her two terms as, of two years. She's done four years as the queen. And uh, she's really looking forward to kind of taking a step back from the limelight, from the political theater, I guess you could say, and kind of start living this quiet life. And she's wanting to kind of go on this mission to free slaves because of a little boy that she met a few years before from a desert planet called Tatooine. We all know who that is. That's Anakin. But she's wanting to go on this mission to free slaves in the Outer Rim because this is something that she's not, not okay with, right? Uh, but as we know from Attack of the Clones, she's asked by the new queen coming in to stay on as senator for the planet of Naboo, and she couldn't refuse. So this novel is basically her learning that new theater, not as royalty, not as a queen, but as a senator, which is a much different role to play in politics than, than as an actual monarch, right? So in this novel, we see Padme step into that new arena, that, that new role, and try to come to terms with this new role and, and kind of the responsibilities and trying to get people to see her not as royalty but more as a senator now. Uh, the title Queen Shadow does not actually refer to Padme at all. It's actually referring to Sabe, who we saw in The Phantom Menace, who's played by Kira Knightley, her decoy during the events of Episode 1. Because Padme is not able to go to the Outer Rim to do this mission that she's wanting to do, this passion project, if you would, this passion mission, she sends Sabe in her stead. And so Sabe goes to the Outer Rim and starts this mission of trying to free slaves uh, and, while, while Padme is, is back on Coruscant. Uh, now, this book had some pros and cons to it. Uh, really, it had more pros than it did cons. I really did enjoy this book a lot. I had a lot of fun reading it. Uh, it was a great look into Padme and her relationship with the Handmaidens, the way their system worked the way they worked together, what each of them kind of brought to the table a little bit, each having their own abilities, you know, and stuff like that. And also, it really focuses on their loyalty to her as a person. And it's not just Padme stepping into this new role, it's them as well, having to become handmaidens for a senator instead of royalty. So it's a huge change for everybody. And this is one that, uh, that, I, that I really liked getting into and seeing that kind of dynamic and, and seeing how they all work together. Uh, like I said, this focuses really heavily on her relationship with her handmaidens and, and much different relationships with each one. Uh, as, as you'll find out reading the book, her and Sabe were incredibly close. Almost, I don't want to say, mm, I might get some slack for saying this, almost, not quite, it never got this far, but almost to me, it seemed like there was an underlying almost, almost, not there, uh, romantic kind of connection there. And maybe it's not necessarily romantic. Maybe it was just a very strong bond, but I couldn't help kind of get a little bit of undercurrent of that in there. Maybe you'll read it and you won't catch that, but that was just me personally. Uh, it was a very enjoyable read. It was, it was a lot of fun getting to see uh, into Padme's life. There is a con with this book, however, and it seems to be a normal... Uh, theme throughout this entire trilogy and, and I'll talk about it a little more towards the end uh, after I've talked about all three books but nothing really happens in this book 
It's weird to say that about a book that I just said I really enjoyed reading, but there wasn't a whole lot to it as far as content. It was a really great study on her relationship with her handmaidens and, and, and a look into her life, but nothing really happens in this book. If you get if you get my meaning, there's a couple of situations that these characters go through to kind of show how they would deal with a situation. And those situations were really only there. It seems like they were only put there to help build some of these relationships, but nothing really groundbreaking happens in, in this novel. I still really enjoyed the book. I thought it was a great insight into that whole system with, with her and the handmaidens. Uh, so it was my second favorite in the trilogy. It was, uh, like, like I said, it was an enjoyable read. Uh, moving on to the second book in this trilogy, it is Queen's Peril. Uh, Queen's Peril was also by E.K. Johnston. It was released on June 2nd, 2020. And uh, this one is actually a prequel to Queen's Shadow. This one, if you're reading them chronologically, this will be the first one you want to read, then Queen's Shadow, and then Queen's Hope. But they were released in this, this wacky order. Kind of the George Lucas order, if you would. Uh, so Queen's Peril picks up on Queen Amidala's election day. She has just become queen. She is a new queen to Naboo. She's very new to this entire entire political thing, right? She's gone through political classes throughout her life and done different things, but this is a whole new ballgame, right? The whole first half of this book is kind of her meeting her handmaidens for the first time. Captain Panakin went out and found all these girls to basically devote their lives and commit to Patme, to Queen Amidala. He goes out and recruits these girls based off of different abilities. You know, one's a seamstress, one's really good with working with machines, you know, like different skills that they can bring to the table. But they all look like Padme, right? We know, we know the dynamic there, the decoy thing. Uh, but the whole first half of the book is her getting to know these these handmaidens on a personal level. There's a lot of stuff in this second book that's a lot of teenage girl stuff that you're you're gonna see. Uh, definitely some. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but there are some moments in this book that are very kind of tweeny. But that's only for really the first half of the book. The entire second half of the book is, I don't even want to say an abridged version. I will say an abridged version. It's an abridged version of the events of The Phantom Menace from Padme's point of view. Cutting intermittently with what's going on back on Naboo with her handmaidens that left, that, that stayed behind during the occupation. You know, we, we found out that they were in camps, that they were putting citizens in camps and all of this. That is really kind of the meat and potatoes of this book is what was going on back on Naboo. We still see everything going on in The Phantom Menace from Padme's point of view all the way through the, the end of Episode 1, uh, all the way past her taking the palace back. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen Episode 1. All the way through her taking the palace back and the way the decoys kind of work together and really put this plan together to make it happen. Uh, this book was a really cool insight into how they set their system up. It wasn't just the, how they utilized the system. It was how they set the system up. I learned things in this book that I didn't know. Uh, things like that giant red dress that Queen Amidala was wearing at the beginning of episode one has this escape hatch in the back of it. She can basically pop out of and run away in this undersuit if, if things get hairy. I didn't know stuff like that, but it's really cool that they integrated that into something, into a system like that. But that's, that's some things that you learn in this book is how their system worked. And to me, that was the most fascinating thing about this trilogy. Um, so some of the pros and cons to this book. Some of the pros. We'll focus on the positives first. Uh, there's a great deal of detail uh, talking about uh, what was happening on Naboo while Padme was on Coruscant. That's something that we really don't see a lot of in the films. And we don't actually understand how brutal it really was on Naboo with this blockade in this, in this occupation. It was actually horrible. You don't, you don't see it. You're, you're kind of shielded from it with the films. But when you get into this book, there was torture going on. There were you know, curfews, there were, these people were stuck in camps trying to come up with, you know, these, these secret methods of communication between each other, trying to figure out how to beat the system from inside. Uh, when I say there was torture, I'm not kidding. There's one scene where one of the handmaidens is tortured horribly, horribly tortured. 
so it, it's, it was a really cool insight um, into what was going on then. The other pro in this book was that it really showed how the handmaidens got to know each other. Uh, you know, and, and how young girls interact, you know, sneaking out, going to do things outside the palace, coming back, trying not to get caught. It was, it was a lot of that in this book. And it was really cool showing them how, showing you how they work together to really protect their queen. Uh, a couple of the cons for this book, as I mentioned earlier, the whole second half of it is basically an abridged version of The Phantom Menace. You don't really learn a whole lot more from that side of things, uh, but we do cut back and forth with with that with those scenes and as i said with the first book it was more a sabe story than it was padme with this book it was more a story of what was going on in naboo than it was following padme so it at the same time you you focus on these events that padme is not really experiencing but you can see how they would mold her you know having to deal with some of these events as queen and knowing that her people are going through this stuff it really does mold her. Uh, this book was my least favorite in the trilogy. So if you're reading them chronologically, they only get better as you go, in my opinion. But this one was my least favorite of the trilogy. Still an enjoyable read. Uh, like I said, it really focuses a lot on the relationships and with their interactions as characters than it does really in introducing any new events into the timeline or, or kind of showing anything new happening. It's basically things we've seen before, but maybe from a different point of view. So uh, those are my thoughts on the second book. Now, the third book, Queen's Hope, also by E.K. Johnston, was released on April 5th, 2022. And this one is my favorite book of the trilogy. This is my absolute favorite book. Now, going into this one, I really thought I thought I'd read somewhere. Maybe I read it wrong. Maybe I just didn't understand what I was reading at some point. But I thought this one was going to be the events of episode three from her point of view, but that is not what this book is. That is nowhere near what this book is. Uh, this one is my, my favorite out of the trilogy. This one picks up during the last, like, three or four minutes of Attack of the Clones. At this point, the Clone Wars have kicked off, uh, and this is right before Anakin and Padme's wedding day at the end of Attack of the Clones. The whole first couple chapters of this book are... Uh, their wedding day and them kind of preparing for it and, and, and getting ready for that. Uh, there's a mission that they go on together the day of their wedding before they come back and get married that night, that evening in front of the sunset. And it's kind of a neat little mission that does end up tying back later on in the story. Um, but Anakin is a, is a prominent character throughout this book, which was really nice addition. And, and especially with it focusing on Padme's life and kind of an insight into her life, Anakin has to be there to show how complicated everything gets when she gets married, right? Uh, so this one takes place immediately after the Clone Wars kickoff. Uh, they're still not sure what planets are going to side with which side and, and, you know, and all these different things. There's a lot of fear in the galaxy with everything going on. Nobody really knows anything about the clones. There's still this mysterious army that came out of nowhere. So there's a lot of enigma around them still. Uh, and, and there's there's a lot there for the galaxy, uh, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, so Padme, during this story, after the wedding and everything, uh, she's back in the Senate. Things are much different in the Senate now with the war kicking off. And she's kind of asked for by this mystery faction in the war. She doesn't necessarily, well, I, she knows who it is, but I'm not going to ruin who it is. I'm not going to drop any spoilers. But she's tasked with going on this secret mission where these people only want to talk to her. And so in order for her to get away from the Senate with everything going on, she has to recruit Sabe again, who is, again, in the Outer Rim, doing this slave mission, trying to free slaves, right? So she brings Sabe back in to cover for her in the Senate while she goes off and does this other uh, secret meeting. Now... I'm not going to ruin anything that happens in this book. Like I said, this is my favorite one in the trilogy. But imagine, just use your imagination for a minute. You're a senator. Oh, you don't have to be a senator. You're a woman who just secretly married a Jedi. Well, you're a senator. They just secretly married a Jedi. And you run off to do this mission that you don't even tell your husband about. And you bring in a lookalike to cover for you. Can you imagine the shenanigans that happen? 
the revelations that are found out by certain people and things like that. That's all I'm going to say. There's a lot in this book that was really enjoyable to read. This one, a l- just a little bit happens in it. Not a whole lot, but a little bit more than the other books, which really isn't saying a whole lot. Uh, but it, again, it really focuses on those relationships between Anakin and Padme, between Sabe and Padme, between Sabe and some of the other handmaidens. There's, there's some really cool connections there. Uh, there's a couple of scenes with Palpatine in this book that are really cool uh, between her and Sabe. So there's, there's some really cool interactions here that you don't get, normally get to see anywhere else. Uh, and, and to see Anakin and Sabe kind of interact a little bit is really cool considering the only time you ever saw them talk to each other was, I think, in episode one during one of the decoy scenes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was a really fun read. Some of the things that we find out in this book, certain people find out about other people are really humorous. Uh, I laughed out loud while reading some of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a great look into Anakin and Padme's relationship after their wedding. And the, there's something else this book does that I thought was really, really cool. And, and again, it doesn't just focus on Padme like the first two books didn't. We see a glimpse into what Sabe is doing on Tatooine, trying to free these slaves. And we find out in some of these intermittent chapters what Shmi Skywalker and Brew Lars were up to during the time leading up to Shmi's death in Episode 2. We find out that they were basically on missions to free slaves also. And I'm not going to ruin how because it's really, really cool when you read it and and to kind of go through it naturally and organically. But it was really cool to see that they were really stepping up to the plate and they weren't just trying to survive on a moisture farm somewhere that they were really trying to step up and help continue that mission of freeing slaves and everything. It was really, really cool. Uh, So those were the pros for the book. The cons, like I said, not a whole lot really happens throughout this book. There's a couple of little things, but nothing really big. Again, it focuses strictly on relationships. That's all this is. That's that's all this trilogy basically does. Uh, And the book was honestly very anticlimactic. I did sit down the entire last half of the book. I sat down and read one reading. I, I, on my Kindle, I got to 50% on my book, and I said I'm just going to go and finish it and powered through it. It was only a couple of hours. So the books aren't that long to read. They're not, they're, I mean, they're young adult novels. They're not even Del Rey novels. So you can power through them pretty quickly. Uh, but like I said, this one was my favorite. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one was my favorite in the trilogy. Uh, really, really liked it a lot. And uh, it, it, it feels weird saying that after saying not a whole lot happens in a trilogy. It's, it's one of those things you almost have to read it yourself to understand what I'm saying. Uh, if you've read them, you know, maybe you have the same opinion. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you thought they weren't that enjoyable. I don't know. Uh, but that's just, just my opinion on, on these books. Overall takeaways for this trilogy. The trilogy focuses really heavily on relationships. I've said that uh, more than once already. Uh, more than anything that is actually happening in the galaxy. It re- it's really a personal... These are very personal books. Uh, They're very small scale. There's not a whole lot you're going to miss if you don't read them. Uh, If you're a Padme fan and you don't think there's a lot of Padme material out there, definitely check this trilogy out. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Like I said, getting that insight into how that system with their handmaidens worked and everything like that, I think you're really going to enjoy that. Um, If you're not really a Padme fan, which I don't know how you wouldn't be, but if it's something that, if she's a character you're just like, eh, back burner for now, well, I'll read it if I don't have anything else to read. If you don't read these books, you're not going to be missing anything going on in the galaxy as an overall. You're, you're, it's, there's nothing galaxy shattering in these books. There's there's no big revelations. Honestly, there's not even really any big spoilers. Um, so you you may be able to sleep on this trilogy a little bit more. I definitely recommend reading it though. Um, even if if you come to a point where you're reading some other stuff that you're more interested in and you come to uh, a gap where there's nothing new coming out and you were looking for something to read, I would recommend this this trilogy. I would definitely read them back to back if I were you. I, this is a trilogy that, I, now that they're all out, I think this is a trilogy that deserves to be read back to back. And I think if I was going to have somebody read them, I would suggest to read them not in the order they came out, but in the in chronological order. So Queen's Peril, Queen's Shadow, Queen's Hope. To me, it just makes more sense that way. So that's, that would be my recommendation uh, for those books. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys get as much enjoyment out of them as I have. But, uh, but what I think is not important. What is important is what you think. Uh, if you've read this trilogy, sound off below on your thoughts about these three novels. 
Uh, there's not a whole lot of spoilers for these books, but still at the same time, don't try to give away anything uh, that may ruin the experience for somebody else. And keep the conversation uh, civil. I, I know how Star Wars fans are, but uh, give me your thoughts. I'd like to know what you guys thought about this. And keep in mind, just because I felt a certain way about this trilogy does not mean you necessarily will. You guys might really enjoy it. You might think there's a lot in there to take away. Um, and, and maybe the complete opposite. Maybe you guys will read it and say, these are worthless. These are not worth my time. Who knows? Uh, but remember, that's just my thoughts. So that's the great thing about this universe. The decision is ultimately up to you on how well these books do and, and, and what you think of them and how good or bad they are. So until next time, guys, keep reading, and the Force will be with you. <laughs>